more thing for everybody. Uh, we have our uh, pinnacle of filmical. Yes. We are on number 90, I believe, at this point. We are breaking down the top 100 movies of all time according to imdb.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we freeze-framed it, so some of the movies might move around, but... Uh, this week we are looking at number 90 on our list, which is the 1948? 1948 classic horror movie, <laughs> bi- uh, drama, Bicycle Thieves. No, it is not. It is the, it's not a horror class. What is it? What it's is a it? drama. It's a drama. It's a drama. It's a drama. Um, this movie is, uh, like I said, Bicycle was, Thieves. Uh, bicycle, bicycle Thieves. thieves. Uh, it is a uh, Italian film. Um, so you got to read subtitles in this. Um, it is one of, it took place during, uh, it, w- essentially what the movie is about, it's post World War II. Mm-hmm. Um, and it focuses on a family who's trying to make, uh, specifically the, the father trying to make his way, get a job. Um, and in this world, it's kind of like post World War II where there's jobs are very sparse. It's very hard to get by. And in so- a losing country. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the economy is very bad. Yeah, the economy is very bad, and he's trying to find a job. And there's like basically he goes to like the Department of Labor type thing, and they're giving out jobs. And they say, "Well, we have this job, but somebody you need a bike." And he's like, "I got a bike." Well, guess what? He doesn't well, have. First, a bike. he was like, "I don't have a bike." And they're like, "Well, are you sure? Because we'll just give this to a guy who that has, has a bike." bike. He's like, oh, I, 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 I got a bike. I got right, a bike. and so it's about him. Uh, in the movie, because I don't want to spoil anything, then we'll get the spoiler town. I know, 1948. <laughs> I know. But uh, my point people is, are watching people who are listening to this are not Italian neorealism fans, okay? Like, they probably haven't... Like me. Like you. <laughs> Most people aren't. Uh, so... Uh, what ends up happening is he obviously, he, he gets this job with this bike. And then of course, cause the movie's called bicycle thieves, it's stolen. And it's about him and his son, uh, going around Rome, trying to find his bike. And that's pretty much it. And yeah. if I tell you any more, I'll spoil the movie, but that's what it is. It's about him going on this, trying to figure it out. Hilarity ensues. Uh, there are well, there are funny moments. I think there's a couple, a lot of not a, not a lot of funny moments. But um, with that in mind, uh, it is it is in a lot of people's opinion, this is considered one of the greatest movies of all time because of how strikingly different it was at the time in 1948. Um, in the 40 in the in the in 48 or even in that time period, the 20s and 30s, movies were about being Hollywood, glitz and glamour, and about showbiz, and all yeah, and all that stuff about doing fun things on film. Nobody wants to watch all the t- nobody wants to live there. The terrible that's what it's escapism, right? So this movie is a change in that um, a stark change and it's called uh neorealism which was this idea of filming on set um it's about using like unknown actors um focus on using on set like even war-torn italy you yep. know shooting like actual places and you saw in the movie a lot of places that were like just burnt down yeah, it's, it's really sad. Pretty busted. And, all that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah. and it focuses, usually these stories focus on something uh, not grandeur, something very small, a conflict that is uh, something relatable. Uh, in this case, trying to find your, like you, your stolen it's, bike. It's like, it's basically like, it's human conflict. Mm-hmm. It's relationships, it's jobs, it's... And it's super powerful because this movie came out, again, 1948, and in, there's moments in this movie where I'm like, super relatable. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever had anything taken from you or stolen from you, but like, there are moments in this movie where I'm like, I remember when that got stolen from me and it sucked. Um, and so, uh, let's let's review it. Um, again, because this is a top 100 movie of all time, it's on a curve. Thumbs up is great movie, deserves to be on this list exactly where it is or even higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, thumbs to the side is great movie, but maybe not a top 100 movie or maybe a little bit lower than what it is. Again, this was number 90. Thumbs down, accounting error. Where why is this on this? Uh, one, two, three. I give it a thumbs up. You two both gave it a thumbs to the side. So yes. I think it's appropriate here because of I think the problem that I have with this movie is kind of because it's we're watching it in 2016, right? So this being the first of its type of this movie is is why I think it does. It, in my opinion, gets a thumbs up because so many movies now do this. This is where they got this from. This idea of showing something like I think of uh, the, the the movie Lost in Translation, right? It's like the movie's about almost nothing, right? It's like about it's about human conflict and about change and like the relatable things that occur in your life, um, and that's what this movie's about. And that was so juxtaposition against grandeur and Hollywood and glitz and glamour. And there's a moment in this movie because his job is to uh, paste up uh, posters for mm-hmm. movies, which is so awesome and so meta, right? I love when they do that in these movies, like movies about movies, which we saw with. Uh, um, singing in the rain and now we got mm-hmm. a guy who's posting up movie posters and if you see the movie poster it's this beautiful woman in this very grand dress you know grandeur uh, awesome looking Hollywood poster and it's just like but this is a movie showing like you can make stories and you can make films about something small and relatable and, and awful you know something something that doesn't have a necessarily a happy ending or terrible things happen to good people that's the, that's like that's the first movie that I mean there are movies that do that but like there's 
we'll get to the spoiler town, but there's not much resolution in this in this no, film. There ain't much, um, and that's why I, it's kind of thumbs aside for me too. Like I just I like movies that um, I guess there's a beginning, middle, and end. Yes. And this one, I, and I guess they're they're there's technically an end. there's an end of the movie, but it's just like, oh, uh, okay, yeah. like oh, there's where it says Finn. All right, I guess this movie's over. Why 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 is it not? I thought I, you thought you were a big neo realism fan. Uh, well, this is this movie was made towards almost towards the end of uh Italian neo realism because actually during into the fifties, the Italians were like, don't show everyone our our dirty laundry. Let's and they were more into the American. No, no grand one's coming flashy. as tourists. <laughs> yeah, they're they're more into the grand flashier movies. Um, so this was more towards the end. But um, I it I, it's, it's kind of the same. I kind of would have liked to see less of them searching and more of um his relationship with his wife like yep. them mm-hmm. talking about it a little bit more like them like dealing with it a little bit more but i don't know that's just me so okay so let's get into spoiler town so if you have not seen this movie go watch the movie come back because this is a good movie mm-hmm. i think it's, it's, a, good. it's, Very it's, good it's a good movie so um so obviously this first of all the first thing i noticed the director messes with you right off at the beginning uh, so the movie's called bicycle thieves so you know his bike is going to be stolen that's not a mystery right right so this character gets a bike which is so sad because they have to sell their sheets on mm-hmm. their beds to go no, buy that's like why the it's the only such a good thing deal, that they yeah. had like... well he had a bike and then he pawned it to pay for i mean these people are in working poor like stricken with poverty and so he had a bike had to pawn it to go buy other things Mm -hmm. food i'm assuming for his family or rent um but then obviously now he needs a bike for this job and they have to pawn the sheets and the thing that is so sad about it is like how they have all these people's sheets and they're just like throwing it up this so it's not even up like all yeah it's not even like we need it it's just you know like it's clearly pawn showing it. that that uh, separation of economic inequality. Like this pawn shop has thousands of things that like they're not they're they're literally sheets that are just sitting in a. I was like, why did they even take them? Why were they just like, no, we're good, we're good on sheets. We got uh, if you just look behind me, you see plenty of sheets. We're good on sheets. Yeah, well, but so then he gets the bike and the the joy and the pride that you see in this character, who's not a big name actor. He was just a guy. And how he just shows the pride of like getting that job and putting on the uniform in the morning and cleaning the bike and well, I like, getting, I, getting the thing from his his wife the the omelet in the morning mm-hmm, like yeah. it is so because you know it's not going well it's not gonna go well. Well, I put in my notes like I like the how the kid was like fixing up it's like a scratch it's like came like that it's like oh no it's he's like buffing it all up like he's like a little well because I think it was his bike I think it was the bike that he had initially owned and then pawned because he's like oh they messed it up and he's like yeah, you yeah. should you should get a better deal like the kid is this cute scrappy little kid this Italian kid. Yeah. Um, and it's great. So he like works at a gas station or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And so, uh, so then obviously he gets his job posting up a uh, newspaper or uh, uh, movie posters. You know, you pay. You know, like the I always think of like Banksy. You know, you like you put the thing up and then you put. <laughs> they the, basically just modge podge it. You know, yeah. Glue. Put you it flatten on it and out. Then you put it over. So he's out in. Um, I think it's in Rome is when this happens. Mm-hmm. He's in a big yeah, area of he's town. In Rome. And he's putting up a poster, and there's like this coordinated effort to steal his bike someone bumps into him so he can't like so so there's like a block before he can run to get the guy on the bike and i had my bike stolen as a kid and i know that feeling of running after somebody that clearly you're not going to catch them because they're on a bike and all you do is just keep running because you're like that's your only instinct is to keep running and screaming stop you stole my bike i had that happen it was terrifying i mean it was like and then you have to walk home. How old were you doing? I was probably like 13 or 14. Oh, that sucks. And it was a nice bike. It was like a nice, sweet Huffy. It was orange, had black flecks on it. It was badass. Oh. It was awesome. <laughs> if anyone was in Vegas speed. It. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> put up a poster. I think I did put up posters as a kid. Anyways. So have that, you seen my bike? So that's super relatable, but there's this moment after he basically gives up because he's not going to catch the guy, right? To go back and he's just like, what the hell do I do now? Like, what do I tell my wife? You know, obviously we sold so much stuff to, to get this. And now I can't have this job. So what am I going to do? Am I going to walk around town and put up the, there's no way I can do it. They won't let me like, Mm -hmm. and I'd have to work all day and all night and it's just not going to do it. So there's this moment of just like, what do you do? So then he goes and he, he, his wife is, he doesn't want to tell his wife. And then obviously he tells his buddy, which is this weird thing where his buddy's like working a, like some kind like of like a theater like a like a yeah actors thing <laughs> yeah it's weird anyways he tells but he's working it. on the street the next day like yeah yeah like doing like cement stuff it's weird so that character i didn't really understand but his his buddy's like hey look look we'll go out don't worry don't sweat i know people break down these bikes all the time and sell them and we'll go see the parts it's got a serial number on it which i'm like wouldn't be the first thing i stole a bike i'd scratch the serial number off but beside the point that but tomorrow and like tomorrow's sunday so you don't have to go to work we'll figure this out before monday yeah well, like, we'll that's convenient yeah exactly so we'll figure it all out you'll be fine and he's like okay okay we'll go we'll wake up early tomorrow we'll go out to rome we'll go to all the shops we'll see we'll try to find my bike 
So him and his son and this this his friend all go out looking for this this bike and to like a market where because mm-hmm. they're like don't worry it'll be at the market in parts like you look for this part you look for the wheels you, see, you like, look for bells, the things you see the the bodies yeah. you see the the tires yeah the frames and stuff, all that stuff yeah. so we're gonna go because they would break it down chop shop it and then yeah. we'll find it and so there, there's this whole scene about him and there's like a few times they're like oh, here it is here's the bike and then like the person's acting very weird because he's like why do you want to see the serial number he's like just let me see the serial number and that he's, he's like, painting so it's like oh you're painting yeah. over it yeah exactly so then they call a cop and the cop comes over and of course it's not the right serial number and it's like he's looking over i love he looks over the cop's shoulder to see if he's actually reading the right yeah, numbers and he's, he's like, like you don't trust me and he's like no i just wanted to read it i mean i can, at this point he's like i can i understand don't trust anybody right yeah, yeah. um and uh at some point he figures he he's he gets he basically realizes him and his son it's like we're not going to find the bike what am i going to do and so they're they're, they're at a, and that's what at the point where they're like screw it we're just going to go all out yeah we're going to go gonna, out we're, we're going to go, go ham out. yeah we're going to drink wine the kids going to get hammered we're going to have cheese mozzarella sticks yep um but then there's obviously this this the scene where the kid keeps looking over at this super rich family that's just dining you know it's that economic inequality thing where it's like we're just trying to get a bike so we can have a job not to like, like joyride, like literally just to, so I can feed my family. And you're over there like this little stupid kid with his ugly. He looks so damn ugly. And I like where he's like, do this math for me. He like reads off like this is how much I'll make a week. This is with overtime, like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, crap. No, nah, man, we got to get the bike. Like we're so screwed without it. Yeah, there's no. It's such a sad story. Yeah, God, and... just like. But there oh. is this moment where he's, you know, obviously one of the, I, maybe this isn't the intended theme, but it certainly came through for me is. Um, as he's searching all throughout Rome and he's like, he's getting more and more frustrated. He's like getting mad at his kid and his kid is like this, just the perfect kid. He's out there working his butt off trying to find this bike with his dad and he understands the frustration, but he's keeping his spirits up and he's not, he's not moping around and his dad kind of treats him like, yeah, I, did I mean, put I don't mean notes, to, I don't uh, mean to father cuss, of but that's, the year award. No, yeah. he's a jackass. He doesn't appreciate. He's just constantly looking for this bike when he doesn't realize, like, look at how great your kid is. Like, you've raised a good kid, and like your kid is working hard. And he just kind of taught, like, okay, you go do this. I'm going to do this. And he's like, okay, okay, I guess. And then there's a moment where he hears someone that he thinks someone when he tells his kid to go wait by a bridge. He's looking for all this stuff, and then he hears somebody and screaming. This is after mm-hmm. he hits his kid, by the way. Yeah, he so. slaps his kid because his kid's like, um, I forget. Because he was like hungry. He wanted to. Yeah, stay he was for like church. Super supper or something, or something. Yeah. he's like dad i'm hungry and he's like god oh, shut up we gotta find this biker we're never gonna you're gonna you know you're gonna be really hungry yeah. right he doesn't realize he's a kid and like this isn't the responsibility put on a kid right like this is your this is your problem yeah i mean it's gonna be your kid's problem if you don't solve <laughs> it but right now it's just your problem and his kid is still keeping you know doing all the things that he should do as a good kid and this kid's young i was he like seven yeah, eight? He little. yeah he's a little kid um but then he hears people, dr- someone drowning in the, by the bridge, and he a moment has this moment of clarity of like, oh my god, it could be my kid, and he runs down there and he's screaming his kid's name. I forget what his kid's name was. Bruno. Yeah, Bruno, Bruno. And then he goes out to the bridge, and they pull somebody out of the water, and it's not his kid. He's like, oh, and he sees his kid, and then immediately he goes back to, kind of being a jerk to his kid for a moment, and then there's some levity and stuff like that. But eventually he, they both accept the inevitable. We're not going to find the bike, um, and so. Th- that sets in and then it's kind of like, well, what are we going to do? I mean, it's one of those things. If you're, it's riding the rocket, the nuclear rocket, just get on and put a cowboy hat on. We're all going down. And then there's this moment where he's going to go to this fortune teller. Cause well, there's the seer that his wife went to and his, and he's like, why are you that... spending money on this? You know, this is all BS. Yeah, that part I didn't get really out of there. Like. You're being daft. They said that a lot. Yeah. You're being daft. <laughs> but like, um, and then he's kind of on his luck. And remember when his wife went there, the seer told her, "Hey, your husband's gonna get a job," and obviously yeah. that happened. So maybe that was like his last resort. Like, yeah, was you know, with the bike, and she's like, "You'll either find it right away, or you won't find it at all." And he's like, "Yeah, but well, what's the address? <laughs> like, give me exact coordinates, lady. Come on." Yeah, and and so and that just shows the despair of like he's willing to go to the person that he thought was a, a basically a nut, yeah. a nut, and he's like, "Well, the, might as well. I got no other option." And when that fails. He's basically just, he's done. He's like, he finds the person that he thinks stole it. Actually, I think it was, I the, think per- it was the guy. He yeah. finally finds the person that actually stole the bike from him and he accuses him and he does all these things, but he has no evidence. Yeah, goes in the house and it's no- this whole debacle of him, like the guy who stole his bike has like seizures or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's, he like, like weird, out. No, I think that was a played up thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he accuses this guy in the middle of the street and he's like in this kid's neighborhood. And so all these people around him are like, this guy's not a bad guy. We know him. We're going to sue you for defamation. Yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, which yeah. I was like, what? You're going to sue him for? He ain't got nothing. Like, yeah. go ahead. I mean, that's one of the things you're only, and being a lawyer, you can, you're only liable for what you can afford, right? Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, go ahead and sue the guy. What are you going to get? His bed with no sheets on it? Good luck. Uh, so he accuses this guy, and then they get a cop to come, because the kid actually goes and gets the cop. His little kid, who's like this wonderful son, mm-hmm. right? He even goes and gets the cop, because he realizes, my dad's going to get the crap beat out of him if I don't get a cop over here. 
cop comes in and basically says, "Look, dude. Like, even if he took like, the we'll bike, look in the house. Yeah, we'll look in the house. But you no if you don't, if you don't have any evidence and you don't have any witness, he's like, I'm the witness. He's like, Yeah, that doesn't work. It's yeah. not. That's not how wor- witnesses work. I mean, th- this. So it's like, oh, th- there was other people. Did you get their names? No, no, because I wasn't trying to. Uh, my bike. I was trying to chase after my bike. Yeah. Like, and it's this moment of just like, no one's here to help you. No one. He goes to the police station at the beginning of the movie after it's all, and they're like, yeah, we'll fill out the report, but no, ain't nobody going to look for this. We got other crimes, dude. Yeah. Which you can understand. Sense, from, yeah. yeah, the police are like, people are murdering each other. Like, we're not worried about your stupid bike. Yeah. Go buy another one. And he's like, I can't. You know, so, so then there's the final moment of despair where the person who's, you know, dying of hunger steals the loaf of bread. So he goes down to the stadium near Rome and there's all these bikes where people have parked all their bikes and he's going to commit the the final but there's, there's guards guarding and then he looks back and like the street right there is like there's a bike right there no one's looking at it yep no one's everyone's looking at... paying attention at the game he tells his son to go take the tram because he's like you need to go home he's like why I'll help, keep helping he's like go home because he knows what he's about to do mm-hmm. he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do the last thing you can do right he's pushed to he's a good man right this whole movie is about terrible things happening to good people and then good people doing terrible things that's what this whole movie and that's so relatable like that's why this movie is important because it teaches you like yeah I'll, i'm not gonna get on my soapbox right now but it's this idea of like everybody shouldn't be holier than thou mm-hmm. everybody shouldn't look down on people when they they do terrible things i get it there are people we should look at the circumstances look at the look at context the all, picture, yeah. all those things matter so of course he attempts to steal it gets on the bike people start chasing him just as it happened to him and his when his bike was stolen unfortunately not he's so not, successful that he's time. not a good bicycle thief <laughs> um, and he gets caught and the kid by the way is seeing this because he he couldn't get the last tram out right yeah and the kid is just like bawling because he sees his dad you trying, know yeah, trying you to almost get committing the, a crime yeah, yeah and get, get the crap kicked out of him almost and but then the guy whose bike that he stole he finally wrestles him and he looks at him in the eyes. He sees the kid and, and sees, sees the him, despair. Like, ah, I'm not going to press you. Yeah, what's the story. point? Like, yeah. this guy's already facing, you know, he had to steal a bike in front of his kid. Like, you know, what What am I going to do to him that's going to make it any worse? Like, his kid's, you know, that's terrible. Yeah. And then the movie ends. Yep. Yeah. They walk away. They apparently walk home. And that's the end of the movie. And that is what I think, that was the most drawing part of the movie. Because I was like, really? That's yeah, it? same here. I, yeah. When I said, like, Finn, I was like, Wait, what is there a bicycle thieves too? What happens? <laughs> bicycle thieves too. Uh, no, and that that's what I think makes this this movie incredibly powerful. Is like it's not it takes all of your expectations and goes no, I'm not going to do that. And it even messes with your expectations because at the beginning of the movie he has some kids watch his bike and go up to a, a apartment mm-hmm. and he's like, hey, can you watch my bike? And you're like, they're going to steal his bike. And then, I thought the same thing. Yeah, and he come back down and it's like, nope, his bike's still there. And you're like, ah, are you tricky director because you called it bicycle thieves. I thought his bike was going to get stolen. <laughs> Um, so, but the movie, again, I think the thing I take away from this more than anything, this, this cements the idea that, you know, not every movie is about bad things happening to good people and then good people prevail. Sometimes bad things just happen and nobody and you're worse for wear and life sucks. Get used to it. Um, but also it's the idea that, you know, you, when you, when people are pushed to their ultimate limit, they will do things that reprehensible things or things that they are against their interest or things that. Um, that they feel like they have no choice, you know. He he tried all of the appropriate righteous remedies. He went to the police. They basically told him, "I ain't gonna help you." He went and looked for it um, in the market. He went and scoured Rome day after day. And his even his son was like, "We'll keep coming out here every day until we find it." Um, and his son is like, is the is the shining light, you know? It's the part where it's like, well, just keep the right, keep on the righteous path. Mm-hmm. And finally, he says he cannot do that anymore. And he pushes, he tells us the righteous path, go on the tram so yeah, I can don't do, look. Don't look so I can do this terrible thing. And then he tries to steal and it's like, it sucks. Life sucks, man. Like The part that got me was the part where he was at the stadium and he's sitting there and just all these bikes are going like just whizzing by him. Well, yeah, because he I'm sees like, all the bikes parked and he sees one in the alleyway and then they're all driving by and he's just like, you could see the battle that he's having within just like... Yeah. God, man, I'm about it, to, am I really about to do this? Right. Like, I really like he's thinking about like, what can I do this? No, there's... I have to steal a bike. That's the only thing I can do. Yeah, I, that's the only way I can provide for my family. There's no other way. And and the, 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 there's not a human being on this planet who has never had that internal struggle. There's always somebody who's done something that they know they shouldn't do, but they're like, and they have that moment of like, do I want to do this? Do I really want to cross that line, right? And even if it's something not, you know, it's it's blowing up at somebody in an argument. You're upset and you're angry and you're trying to be calm and then you lash out. Like you have to make that conscious decision to be 
loud and you know bombastic or whatever it may be and you see that on camera and this guy is not a trained actor and he sells it man it feels like you're like please i remember i'm like don't steal the bike man because you're not don't steal the bike and then i think to myself like all you're doing is taking your frustration and your your angst and your despair and you're just displacing it to somebody else what if that person needed that bike to do that it's this idea of that consequences things matter right it wasn't just somebody hey i stole that guy's bike look at this nice bike i'm gonna make you know a couple extra it makes you think about the guy who stole his bike because, like, did he steal it to pond and buy food for his family? Because yeah. it was him and his mom and his sister, I think, Yeah, right? and, like, they're not doing well in either. In that one-room apartment kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, and they're not so, looking great. Yeah. And she talks about how her son's, like, this great guy. And it's like, she might be correct. He might have been a great guy until he was pushed to the point where he has to do something terrible. So like it's steal like, bike? Yep. Right. And it's just, you know, context matters. You know, people, good people do bad things. And not everybody who does something reprehensible isn't a bad guy or a bad girl. It's, there's, there's factors at play my wife is always we watch that show locked up she loves that show it's the prison show and she's like i want to know everyone's story how did you how did you get here and most people are like "Eh, i don't care they're a criminal they're done i don't need to i don't need to care about them it's like this movie is like yes you do like there are bad people who do bad things for their own interest but there are also people who do bad things to help other people yeah but there's also a series of events that have led them a bad person to do bad things like and what was that point like you know what i mean and and that's what this movie no one's born and then these those you know these aren't traditional things that are taught in film like even today i mean there is some of that but they're sitting like that is not that is not the norm right we just talked about fantastic beasts right there's no like terrible things happen to bad like there's resolution there is uh, there's conflict there's uh, there's a, a climax and then there's resolution something good happens to the good characters the good guys win in this movie it's like no good guys lose good guys lose they're they are now and this is the worst thing is like now that guy has to walk back to his family one no bike in hand two realizing he is now just as bad he's capable of performing these reprehensible awful things and he has to live with that for the rest of his life and his son now knows yeah his son knows stuff. like he's never going to be able to look at his son in the eye and say no i'm a good guy it's like, well, no, you try to, and it's like, well, let me explain. It's this idea of rationalization. Everyone can rationalize something terrible. Again, that's why it's so powerful for me. It teaches something, and it doesn't give the audience closure. It just says, no, life sucks, man. And sometimes people do bad things, and here's why. Think about it. Take a second to think about it. It's just, I loved it. It was an awesome movie. It, it was really good. It was really good. It's yeah. about an hour and a half long, and that was just about as I, I almost didn't. I was like, this is getting kind of like they've been looking for the bike for a while. And that's part of it. Like, you actually get tired of looking for the bike. You're like, come on. Either find it or don't find it. Let's yep. move on. And like, and it's this up and down, up and down of like, we're going to find it. We're not going to find it. Ah, oh, who cares? Let's just go out with a bang. Wait, we probably shouldn't have done that. That could have been like a month's rent. Okay, we got to find it now. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 very good. So check that out. I do have a couple notes here. I said yeah. a kid is adorable. Father of the Year Award. Um, <laughs> well, I said how uh, it's funny where he's like fitting his uniform and she's like, you look like a cop. And then he like proceeds to fake choker and stuff. I'm like, wow, times have not changed very much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, a solid movie. Yeah. What, what did you think? Sure Again, you 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 watch more of this neo realism type of idea of film, and and so that would be interesting to think, you know, what you think of it. No, I mean, I I thought you know the same thing. It's that disparity that, um, you know the the juxta the I can't even say the word juxtaposition juxtaposition yeah. yes of you know that's the, a drink word here on the podcast yeah <laughs> right. of uh you know the the rich family and and the poor family that moment in the restaurant and then. Um, like Gerald said, when he's contemplating actually doing it, like, am I going to go through with it? And then it's, you know, at first it starts with, you know, seeing everybody with their bike and, you know, that you, ha- we've all had that moment where we've wanted something so bad and you see everybody else with it and it just like breaks your heart, you know, and he just wants that bike so badly to provide for his family. Um, it's like just said, the it's joy that he had when he had the good job and he's like, this is a good job. And he's and telling his wife. And everybody was so yeah. happy and, yeah. you know, his kid was happy and. Um, for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks, man. That's like, my main yeah. thing. With, uh, we always we talked about it like a couple weeks ago. It's like we gotta talk to each other, man. We gotta talk to each other. People are dealing with problems, man. You can't just act like nobody's got problems. Everybody got problems. I want a bike. I want my orange bike with black flex back. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know what you did to me. Yeah. Led up to this moment right here where I'm gonna cry on film. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's uh that is Bicycle Thieves. Check it out. Um next week we have number we're now moving into the eighties. I think it's number eighty nine. Two thousand one a space odyssey. Yes, the Stanley Kubrick. Yep, 1968. Uh, yeah. Weird. Movie. Yeah. I'm, I will watch sorry, it again. Dave, I'm going to watch it again. That. 
Yeah. So yeah. Sorry, Dave. Open the open the hatch doors. Freaking though. Google DeepMind. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no joke. They were only off by probably about thirty years, and then yeah. it's actually going to happen. Um. So yeah, watch that movie. Ke- uh, keep up with us because we're going to go through all eighty, uh, all one hundred or eighty nine remaining movies. Um. But also. Um, to bring it back to the uh, beginning of the podcast, remember we have our um, holiday giveaway. Second annual. Second annual holiday giveaway. To participate, all you got to do is donate $5 or more to Toys for Tots. So that's go to toysfortots.org slash donate. Snap a photo of your donation. Put it on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter with... Or email it to us. Or email it to us, but hashtag it with uh, SDS giveaway or pound sign. Pound sign. Bring you know it's funny? By the way, I was actually calling somebody, like a automated thing, and I was like, hit... hit uh, now I'm going to say hashtag hit pound or hash. It's I, I called the bank and it said the same yeah, thing. Hit yeah. hash. I'm like, geez, it's Twitter <laughs> kids. <too." laughs> um, so just do that. All you got to do is hashtag SDS giveaway. Um, there are a couple limitations. You either you have to be a, a resident of the continental U S and one entry per person. Um, or of course you can just send us your entry to sit down centered at gmail.com we, along with your questions. Too, yeah. Questions, way. comments, concerns, all of those great things. If you email us and we pick you for the week, you get a $5 uh, gift card to Amazon Starbucks or Steam. Um, so that's always going on. Ask Sit Down Standard, as we like to call it. Um, or you'd like to call it. Anyway, we'd like to call it. Email us. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, but again, uh, Toys for Tots. Go out there, donate. We've got lots of great prizes. We got more next week to announce, and we'll keep we'll keep it we'll keep it coming. Little baby birds. Little oh, baby yeah. birds. Like <laughs> I think we should change the logo to uh, throwing up baby oh, birds. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Bye. See ya. Bye.